Welcome to Real Kiwi Fishing. Well, we're into a couple of weeks into May, and we've got a nice still afternoon happening down the bay here. So, what I've decided to do is um, go home and I've just grabbed my fishing gear, surf casting gear, and I'm going to head up here around the bays here. But I'm actually going to go to an old haunt spot. I uh, used to catch some real nice fish back in the day, about 10 years ago. So what I thought I'd do is I'll head up here this afternoon and have a shot of some floating baits in the shallows. And I've got quite a quite a good tide, not, not perfect. Um, we're on dead low now. And I like to fish probably about an hour before dead low. Get the smell of bait. Um, getting in there around where you're fishing pretty much um, as I throw my first bait in it's probably going to be on the turn so we're a good hour and a half before dark I thought I'll come and give it a flick give it a go and um, hopefully there's some snapper there uh, it's nice and overcast so got a good chance then I'm going to start off with because um, I'm on the low tide I'm actually going to try a trace um, normally on the low tide you're out past sort of all the snag, snag areas so you're still going to have um, you're still going to get like your sort of your weedy patches out in front of you and stuff which you want anyway um, but the best thing to do especially on your first sort of couple of casts you want to try a couple of different rigs heavy sinkers light sinkers I fished here before so I sort of know you still want to have a little bit of a like a floating bait um, there's no wind so you can actually get away with no sinkers at all but what I'm going to try first is a little ball sinker okay so basically I've got, got my trace it's probably about three foot long and I've got my little ball sinker that will run down to the hook back to the swivel okay so that's what I'm going to use to start off with if I get snagged up and stuff like that then I can go to the floating baits and the good thing like when you're fishing these um, dead lows you can actually get away with a teardrop two ounce sinker um, like a normal surf cast off a beach because you are out past those sort of areas that you get snagged up on so yep I'll try that see how we go and then I'll change it as, as I need to so you know try a few different things now I've also forgotten my cotton um, which you want when you're fishing with pulchards so the best thing to do like I, what I like to do is I go through the through the mouth through the upper jaw pull it right through through the eye and I go through a couple of times and that just stops the line from when you're casting pulling back through that bait And in through the cheek and back out so there's my first bait now a good thing to do uh, especially when surf casting is you have your keeper hook so I've decided not to use a keeper hook so basically that would be your keeper hook there and then your main hook would be coming out the other side so that's when you run your keeper which I may go to if I'm uh, dropping fish So there you go, got my first bait in the water. Now what I like to do is basically, I've got obviously my bait feeder today, and I like to just lob it out. I don't throw as hard as I can, just give it a good lob so your bait's not flying off everywhere. And I'll just leave it there. I, I, you know, the more you play with it, sort of wind it, it'll get snagged up in the snags out in front of you. 
So just lob it out and leave it there until you get a few bites then you can pick it up or even if you want to stand there with it in your hand still do not wind it because it will just get caught up in that weed and as you might have seen as I casted cast the rod keep it straight all the way until it hits the water so that's just making your guide straight and it's been able to go through those guides a lot easier your line I'm on mono so you know it's quite twisty and stuff so I like to cast, keep the rod straight and it'll just let that line peel out and what I'll do, especially when I'm surf casting off a beach I just leave it there like that for a good 30-40 seconds and I know that it's still dropping a lot of times you'll see people cast hits the water, then they flick the bow arm over and they walk back and what you've done, is you've just hit the water you've put it into gear and basically as you're walking back and with it into gear it's actually coming back towards you so you're losing all that distance so cast let it sink, let it hit the bottom leave the bow arm off, walk back letting the line out, otherwise you're just pulling it back ok so it's a little bit of a tip for you hopefully you get into some fish So I'm just starting to get a few little bites there. You notice that I picked the rod up but I didn't wind, didn't pull anything like that, just held it, seeing if the bites would continue. Didn't get any, any more bites so I've put it back down, put it out of gear again. So getting a few little taps again. So I give it a good sort of good chance for the bait to be gone. And then I'll wind it in because you don't want to constantly wind it in and out. But obviously, you know, you get more chances of getting snagged and whatnot. So, yep, getting a few more little bites there. Okay, so I had a few little uh, taps there. My bait's gone. And normally what I do along the base here is I um, try and stop and get a burly and fling that out as well. And I didn't have time to get one today. And years ago we never used to have to use burley, there was a lot of residential fish along the bays here, which have obviously gone now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's better off if you can get some burley, uh, mix it in a bucket, scoop it up and throw it out. Um, occasionally I'll chop up a few pillies and stuff as well and throw that out. So we've got the tail this time, Now what I like to do is I come in at the tail, right through, halfway up, right through and then back in that same side on an angle in the guts bring it out on an angle pull that slack line and that's it there so once again if you had your keeper hook that would be your main hook there and then your keeper up in here You'd actually put it under that bit of line there, and that'll keep it nice and tight. And then just your little twist, half hitch, keep your bait secure. So that's basically how I do the back end of the police. So as I was saying with the um, casting, I get a good sort of six foot um, gap there from the tip of my rod cast out and I lob it rather than flick it as hard as I can. If I had some cotton I'd probably give it a little bit more of a flick but when you don't have cotton you've just got to lob it out so it's not stripping off your um, hook. So I've had a few small bites, a couple of little tugs, 
and I'm picking my baits gone. And what you want to do when you're winding in, you don't want to get sort of snagged up all the time. You don't just sort of pick up your rod and start winding slowly. That's just going to drag it through all that sort of weed and rock. What I like to do is I give it a good strike. And that gets your, your bait and your sinker and your hook up off the bottom. And then you wind as quick as you can, trying to skip that your sinker and stuff along the surface and that's just keeping it out of all that weed and getting snagged up so yeah try not to obviously move it around too much but when you're winding it in to change your bait and whatnot give it a good yank get it up out of the weed and the rocks and then wind as quick as you can and you should be um, safe and out of all that weed and, and rock area snags and stuff came in, grabbed it, struck had it on, but must have been hooked right, so it was quite a nice bite. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a whole pulley, just coming on to dark. Had a couple of good grabs, some better fish, not huge, but you know, probably takeable. So I'll try a new uh, whole pulley, and this is how I rig my pulley. So once again through the tail. right through and again right through and again right through so it's gone through three times and then up into the gut pull your line through gently otherwise it'll break your bait so pull it individual holes right through little half hitch once again sink it down to the bait so once again if you're using the keeper you have your main hook down here and your keeper hook on this other side up in here okay and I probably should be using keeper hooks now with whole baits but I don't have time to Let's get this bait out there. Well, it's getting a little bit too dark to see now uh, for the camera. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. I thoroughly did. Um, even though I didn't get anything big, caught a few small fish there, had some nice hits, a couple of nice hits. Um, I'm probably going to keep keep here, keep on going for about half an hour. If I get anything, I'll um, get the camera out and let you guys see. But um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. A few um, tips and tricks there. Not for everybody, but you know, it's just how I uh, how I roll off the rocks, and hopefully it helps a few years. And hopefully I'm still, still in a chance for a couple of good fish. So I will um, definitely have a couple more casts. I was probably about an hour, like the, the tie was an hour too soon. It'd be nice to be just sort of turning now on the incoming. And I'd be able to stay out there on the point there for about an hour into dark. And I think um, definitely would have got into some good fish. So still got a chance. But I'll... Um, have to put you guys away and have a shot and I'll get you back out if I get into them. Tight lines. <laughs>